Now, it's one thing to make art. It's a whole nother thing to get that art in front of people. So if you've ever wanted to know the ins and outs of setting up and selling at an art show, then don't touch that dial. Uh, don't touch that computer button. No. Don't touch that TV room. Don't touch that phone. No. Well, stick around, because that's what this video is about. Now I'm doing this video today sitting down because frankly, I'm tired. I had a big show this weekend and the studio's trashed, the van's trashed, and I'm trashed. But I thought you'd like a little peek behind the curtain to see what it takes to set up a booth and sell at an art show. Now first off, there's many kinds of art shows that you can sell at. Uh, the most common will be street art fairs. And now these are called street art fairs because they usually block off a street and set up vendor booths. And you know, they, they have these in just about every city. Um, and many artists do very well at these, but be aware that you'll meet a lot of people at these shows that are simply out for the day, just looking for something to do, but they're not really that interested in art. But that being said, I know a lot of artists that do very well at these kind of shows. And quite frankly, I've met some of uh, my best collectors at street art fairs. Now, the one I did this weekend is what I like to call a subculture show. Now, what is a subculture show? Any show that's wrapped around a theme or a subculture, uh, you know, Comic-Con, for instance, is a subculture show. Um, if you paint hot rods and classic cars and you set up and sell at a hot rod show or a classic car show, that is a subculture show. Now, the show I did this weekend was called Tiki Oasis Arizona. It's part of the Tiki subculture. Now, these are great because you're going to meet a targeted audience of people that have like interests and share your passion for that particular subculture. And it's just a great way to get your work in front of a targeted audience. Now, it's the same with any show. First off, you're going to fill out paperwork. Now, it may be an online place where you do it or you have to fill it out and mail it in, but you're going to have to fill out paperwork and you're going to have to send in a deposit, if not the entire fee for the booth. Yes, it does cost money to rent a booth to show your art in at any street fair or art show. Some of these can be quite expensive and, uh, you know, but you have to balance that with the price of your art and the type of buyer that you think you're going to run into at this show. You know, some events, uh, small events might just cost you a few hundred dollars to do, but if you do larger events, it can run into the thousands. For example, if you plan to set up at an event like the Barrett Jackson auction and sell automotive art, uh, it can run into the thousands to rent a booth at a place like that, depending on how big the booth is that you need. If most, mostly they're sold in 10 by 10 increments, but a lot of times I will set up in a 10 by 20 because some of my pieces are fairly large. Now you're going to want to be aware of local tax laws. You will have to have some form of a tax permit and you can usually get temporary tax permits through the government website of the state where the show is going to take place. Now once you've secured a place in the show, you're going to need to make sure you've got a place to lay your head at night, which means you're going to have some travel and hotel fees as well and these can really add up. Now also, you're going to need to eat, so there's the cost of your food for the duration of the show. Now, show food or event food is usually not very good and it's really, you know, pretty expensive too. So I usually bring my own and I keep it in a cooler and I take bites of it when I can. Um, you know, also you want to be sure to bring plenty of water as well. Uh, just on a little side note, uh, if you are going to eat in your booth, try to do it out of the view of people. It just is a little bit more professional that way. Now you're going to want some business cards to hand out to people and you're going to want an online presence where you can send people who want to see more of your work. Oh, also, you're going to want to have some bags for your customers if your work is small. Now if your show is out of doors, you're almost always going to be required to use a white 10 by 10 pop-up and you want to get one that has sidewalls that you can put up. That way you can close up the tent between show days. 
And you're going to need a place to display your work, some sort of wall system, some sort of rack system uh, to display your work. And you can, you know, there are many different systems you can buy or even you can even make these at home yourself. But let me warn you here, you want to spend some money on this and look as professional as you can. You, you don't want to look like a hack and have the display rack that you hang your beautiful work on bring the quality of your work down. When you people walk into your booth, you want it to feel like they've just walked into a gallery in, in downtown LA or New York or someplace like that. You also may need lights depending on how long the show runs, if it's outdoors or if it's indoors, I always put up lights. It just, it presents your work in the best light. <laughs> Um, and again, if you have electricity, if you have lights, you're going to need electricity. And uh, most events make this available unless, like I said, it's a daytime out, outdoor uh, event. But if it's an indoor event, you will need electricity. And most of the time, well, virtually all the time, that is going to be an extra charge. And that can be up to a couple hundred dollars a day. So be aware of that. It's just the cost of doing business. Oh yes, and you're going to need some sort of a sign with your name and logo on it so that you can start to promote your brand, which is exactly what you are. Don't cheap out on this. It's kind of like uh, there could be a mechanic on the street corner. He could be the best mechanic that has ever lived. But if he cheaps out and hires his lame brother-in-law to letter the thing and it looks like poo, well, that, you know, in the eyes of the public, they automatically start assuming he's not a very good mechanic. So. Again, this is the first place people see you. You're, you're, you're beginning to market your brand and you want it to be as professional as possible. So as you can see already, there's a lot of upfront costs to doing a show like this. Uh, and I haven't even mentioned the, the fact that you have to create and frame and pack up and haul all that art. Okay, now for the event itself. Once you arrive, you're going to check in. Now, this lets the event staff know that you're there and you'll usually meet a contact person. Sometimes they'll have a packet for you that will have IDs, parking passes, um, load in and load out instructions. Now, loading in is usually pretty easy, but loading out can be a whole nother story. Loading in especially at bigger events sometimes is spread out even over a, a, a multiple days. But loading out, it usually turns into an insane mad dash of everyone trying to get out all at the same time. Now, couple that with being exhausted from being in the hot or the cold and just, you know, talking to people for, you know, 10 hours a day for multiple days. And it's not the most fun you've ever had, but it's part of the territory. Oh, and that reminds me, usually parking for the vendors is not going to be convenient. It's usually way the heck away from where your event is to leave, you know, obviously closer parking for the customers and whatnot. Again, it's part of the territory. So now once you've checked in and you find out where your space is, you're going to go and you're going to begin to put up your tent and your display walls and your tables if you need them. Don't forget to bring a chair because you don't want to stand for days and days and have no place to rest your feet when your dogs are barking. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, and some events may require you to put down some kind of floor covering to cover the cement. Now you can bring your own or sometimes they uh, will rent them for you, but it's just one more thing to put in the cost column. Now, once you're set up, your tent's up, your walls are up, your price tags are up, you're gonna wanna have some cash in your pocket. For change, when your first customers come in, and they may buy something with cash. You're also gonna to wanna to have a way to take credit card sales. Now, there are a lot of different companies out there that you can do this through. I personally like to use Square. It's much more convenient than it was in the early days when you literally had to buy a credit card machine for hundreds of dollars and then pay fees on every sale. And with the new technology we have, things are much easier. Now, once you've got the tent set up, you've got your walls up, you've got your pricing up, you're ready to rock and you're ready to sell, this is when it becomes fun because you are gonna meet some of the most wonderful people who are going to appreciate your work and support your work. Some of these people will become not only collectors, but they will literally become your friends too. And as an added bonus, 
the other vendors that you meet are going to be some of the most talented people who are out there getting after it just like you are. And most of them are extremely generous and they'll be very helpful with advice for questions that right now you, don't, you know so little you don't even know what to ask. And this way, once you become the old pro, you can in turn help somebody new who's come along and doesn't know what to ask. And besides, it's always good to have a friend to watch your booth when you got to answer the call of nature. You know what I'm talking about? So after a long, hard show of selling in the heat or the cold, you have to break it all down, put it in your vehicle, and drive it all home. Now, my wife and I used to do some shows that uh, we would break down in the evening on a Sunday evening and drive hundreds of miles home and have to be to work again on Monday morning. But you know what? It's all part of the territory and it's all part of the sacrifice you have to do to earn a living doing what it is that you love. Now, once you're home, the work isn't over yet. You have to unload and store your equipment. You have to count up the money that you made, tally up the cash, tally up the, the charge uh, sales, deduct the cost of your booth, deduct the cost of your travel, deduct the cost of your hotel, deduct the cost of your food, and see where you're at financially. Don't forget to deduct those sales taxes you collected. Now you also need to package up and ship any sales that you have made to people that couldn't take it with them. You need to be sure to follow up with any commissions that you may have booked at the show. And don't forget to send a note to anyone that you got a business card from that happened to stop in your booth. Just to uh, thank them for stopping by your booth and supporting your work. Now some good news is, is there's almost always what I call residual sales after a show. So for two or three weeks, you will have people contact you who want to purchase a piece that for whatever reason, they weren't able to at the show. Now I'm sure that I'm probably leaving out a lot of minutia here. Um, and you can see that doing a show like this can seem like a monumental task. But uh, this is where the rubber meets the road. I mean, you're getting your work in front of the people that you want to, to buy from you. Um, once you get through the learning curve and get your equipment together, you will get this down to a bit of a system, which makes things much easier anytime you have to do a show. Now, it wouldn't be fair of me to share this information with you and not share any of the negatives that you will run up on if you do these shows long enough. First off, you are going to talk a lot. I always tell people it's kind of like if you've ever been to a work party for your spouse where you don't know anyone and you have to make small talk, but you're going to do it for 10 hours a day for multiple days on end. And also, eventually you will run up on someone who is rude to you, but it is very rare. 99% of the people that you talk to are going to be great. And, uh, but, the thing to remember is they're there to have a good time. And sometimes people will forget that you're there working and they might chat a little bit too long. The best thing to do uh, in that situation is of course be kind and be tactful, but be aware of the other customers around that are looking at your art because you'll be able to tell by their body language if they need some attention, if they're interested in a piece of art. And then you can tactfully excuse yourself um, from the conversation that you're you're having with the person who might be chatting a little bit longer than than you would think and this will happen this will happen a lot because as you do these shows and you see the same people they will become uh, pals of yours and and they'll you know you may see them once a year and they'll want to do a little catch up with you and that's that's all fine um, but you just be tactful and they will understand if you have to duck away from the conversation for a minute to attend to a customer now this work can be physically hard because loading in and loading out can be heavy work. Uh, but also, especially with outdoor shows, obviously, well, even dealing with indoor shows sometimes, the weather doesn't cooperate. Uh, my wife and I have done shows where it rained sideways or one time it rained so hard it completely flooded the area where we were set up. And this was at a time when all I had was paper prints and. You know, that, that humidity, just even if they don't get wet, the humidity in the air can ruin paper prints. So there is a bit of risk involved, but you'll learn to deal with it. 
Now, as I've said, these shows can be a ton of work, but very well worth it in my opinion. Not just because of the sales you make or the collectors that, that you meet, but just some of the best things that have ever happened to me in my career are directly related to me being at these shows, at these subculture shows, at these street art fairs. And, you know, I've met uh, magazine publishers and it's led to wonderful exposure in magazines uh, that has, you know, spread my work all over the world. Um, gallery owners that have led to wonderful shows that I've been involved in. Um, and some of the best friends that I have in the world right now are some of these talented artists that I've met at these shows. And uh, being in with a good group of artists that are, that are good people, have a great work ethic, and they're out there getting after it every single day, knowing these people can open doors to you that you never even knew were there to be opened. So, to wrap up, first and foremost, stay organized in your paperwork. So stay organized in your show paperwork, stay, stay organized in your hotel paperwork, stay organized in your travel paperwork, because sometimes you may fly into a show. Uh, my suggestion is put all of that in a manila folder and keep that folder in a briefcase or a binder of some sort. Have a pad of paper and a pen because a lot of times you'll want to write down addresses and emails of people, especially if they buy a piece and uh, arrange for you to ship it to them. Um, I would say spend some money and some thought on anything you present to the public. If it's your sign, if it's your tent, if, you're, if it's your display walls, always try to present your work in the most professional way possible. But the biggest thing of all of that, I would say, is whenever you're interacting with people, be kind, be courteous, um, even if you have to excuse yourself from a conversation or if you have a rude customer and you have to ask them to leave your booth, which I have seen happen. Always take the high road, be the kind one, be the courteous one. Um, be prepared for hard work and unpleasant uh, temperatures. Uh, bring extra clothing, uh, bring plenty of food, bring plenty of water. Um, always follow up with your shipping and your commissions and reach out to thank people for stopping by your booth. Now, like I said, these shows can be a ton of work, but the more you do them, the more you'll get your own system down, the more the easier they'll, they'll become to do. Um, I think you're going to find them well worth doing. And don't forget, Again, they can't buy from you if they don't know you exist. Now, if you like this video and you got some useful information out of it, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and don't forget to hit that bell so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. So until next time, go make something cool. Owen's out.